Hey, party people, as you just saw, I'm Nick Letman, an emerging artist in the Seattle area. And today I'm gonna demo uh, the Molotow One For All acrylic paint markers. I should say right up top that I am in no way sponsored by or affiliated with Molotow markers. I'll get into how I found them later in the video, but I just thought that they seemed like the perfect solution for what I was looking for. And I figured people might want to see how they function on a couple different types of surfaces. I'm going to be drawing slash painting a poppy flower, me style, to kick off a collaboration with my good friends Alex and Stephanie at Poppy Design Studios. Please check out the beautiful earrings that they make on their Etsy store, uh, which is linked in the description below. This demo will include a mock-up on paper. I'm using thick-ish, very smooth paper, typically used for drawing with Copic markers, which I used to really love to do in high school, haven't done in a long time, maybe I'll come back someday. Um, and a final run through of the drawing on a polymer clay ornament, which is made by Stephanie and Alex over at Poppy Design Studios. For this Poppy drawing, I will be using Traffic Red, which seems closest to like a middle red, not cadmium, not crimson. Uh, peach Pastel, which is like a light, really light orange. Cool Gray Pastel. Current, which is a nice dioxazine purplish color. Mr. Green, uh, which I would say is kind of like a viridian slash permanent green. Hazelnut Brown, which is a raw umber or sienna or something. I can never keep those two straight. Um, signal white and signal black. I assume the signal means that it's somehow legit, not off-white or off-black. Uh, the markers, as you can see, draw on really nice, practically draw themselves. Very juicy and forthcoming with paint, um, as tested in my scientific smell test up top. Uh, there's practically no odor, which is a nice, albeit less fun, change of pace from the metallic markers I grew up with as a kid that had nibs really similar to these. I was told very firmly and strictly by the store staff at uh, Blick to shake the F out of these before working with them um, and then prime the F out of them to make sure the nib is fully saturated with paint. Um, so I just folded up a little piece of printer paper as a little side bib thing to prime the markers on and get them ready for use. Just doing a couple little extra lines and squiggly guys here, um, as well as overlapping some. You can see the paint, like I said, goes on really smooth and juicy. Lots of paint comes down really easily. Even after waiting four minutes, you can still see here how the orange marker over the green picks up some of the paint underneath and slightly tints the orange I put down after going over the green. I like that look in pastels where the marks are less punchy, um, but the bold marks of these pens, I find that it looks kind of sloppy to be picking up the paint underneath. So I'm gonna try to avoid that. Um, but as you'll see, it takes me a couple tries. Um, one thing to note right off the bat is that I could see this stuff really mulching up paper, like, fast. Um, and the paper that I'm working on is, like, relatively heavy cardstock-like paper, and it started to give out pretty quickly just, like, with the amount of paint that comes out. And if you retread over what you've already worked on, it'll mulch up really, really fast. So that's just one thing to be aware of working on paper. Because the paint eats up the paper so quickly, uh, I didn't really fill in the black background or uh, the red of the poppy completely. Instead, I left it like a little sketchier looking. Um, and that was because I didn't want to overwork the paper and I knew I'd be going back with other colors on top of it and I didn't want to tear through or totally mess up the paper. I found pretty quickly uh, that it was easy to implement a lot of my stylistic elements, the kind of like shapes and lines I've come to use as ways of both representing the reference image while also incorporating elements of abstraction and allowing for some pretty complicated and detailed interactions between layers of mediums and mark making. 
if you guys haven't picked it up yet, the whole like poppy flower thing is kind of riffing off of the title of their store and then incorporating my art style stuff. So uh, yeah, we figured this would be a good place to start and we're gonna do some more flowers for this little small series, but then we'll expand into other things down the road. I ended up being pretty happy with how the layers and shapes finally came together for the mock-up, um, except for the overly sketchy background that ended up giving the drawing slash painting slash whatever um, a busier look than I would have liked. Moving on to the polymer clay ornament itself, um, I was pretty excited to draw uh, paint whatever on something much tougher than the paper. The Paint pen goes on really smooth and nicely onto this and I'm not worried about like fucking up the clay underneath or anything like that and I can really layer it on thick which is super super nice but again you can see here that even though the black on here was dry uh, drawing over it still picks up some of the color underneath and this the NL I had actually drawn that yesterday um, it's not a huge deal because I can just cover it up with another layer once this one's dry, but it's worth noting. So for the drawing of this actual ornament and just kind of in general in this video, I was trying to be a fancy boy with my camera's focus setting. And uh, while the shifting focus thingy looks kind of cool sometimes, other times it means that you just get a really sweet detail shot at the back of my wrist while I scrub marker on an ornament in the blurry background. That's my bad. Uh, I will update the camera focus settings throughout the video next time so that the appropriate shot gets the appropriate focus setting. As a general rule, uh, I'm a grease monster, so anywhere I held the ornament while painting, I could see my little grease prints shining through. Um, I wasn't sure how these would interact with putting down more new paint on top of it, but it seemed like it probably wasn't a good thing. So I took a little wet paper towel and wiped that down just in case. Uh, in the future, I will definitely be wearing gloves when handling things that I'm gonna be painting on. For the ornament, like I said, I could really go back and like work over things very fully. So I was able to fill in sections nice and evenly without making many streaks or line marks in the blocks of color. So Stephanie, Alex, and I figured a while ago that we'd like to do some sort of artsy-fartsy collaboration between their stuff at uh, Poppy Design Studios and my studio art practice. Um, and I always thought that sounded really fun, but I usually work with oil paint and pastels, so I was like, a, I was a bit lost in terms of how I was going to contribute to that. I actually stumbled onto an Instagram reel, uh, or whatever the long videos are called, of someone demoing the Molotow acrylic paint markers, and I light kind of turned on and I thought they looked like a great option for working on smaller canvases, um, as well as even adding into my general studio practice at large. Uh, so I picked some up. Um, I actually picked up a shitload because I am a true sucker, especially for art supplies, but also just in general. I started being more patient with the layers, uh, waiting at least 15 minutes before going back in with the next color, and that worked pretty well uh, in terms of layering distinct and opaque sections. In general though, uh, it usually didn't take more than one mark to cover up the lines or colors underneath it, which I really like. It makes those shapes and lines that I do in my style um, really punchy and easy to do. 
From a style perspective, the smaller scale meant I had to use fewer boulder marks and turn areas that might have had more lines and variation into more unified blocks of color. I picked up uh, two millimeter nibbed markers, uh, but it's worth mentioning that the nibs are interchangeable. You can just like pull them right out, and put a new one in. Uh, and I will be picking up some 1.5 millimeter nibs in the future for a little more precision. Like I mentioned at the beginning, uh, these two millimeter markers, the nibs that is, are a nice compromise between a little brush that's able to fill in spaces easily and a pen. So I'm able to still like incorporate a lot of detailed line work, which is nice. On a scale this small, uh, some of the pointillism and line work that I attempted ended up bleeding together a bit, which I think is a symptom of the pen being really generous with the paint and the nibs being rounded and a little larger than ideal for some of what I was going for. Um, I don't think that this is like a problem with the pens. It's just something that I had to deal with in this piece. I also found uh, a couple of instances where the paint dried in like a cracky way um, instead of having the nice even kind of mid gloss matte finish that the paint usually had. Um, this may have lined up with my little grease prints. I don't actually know, um, but again, worth mentioning. All in all, I'm really pleased with how the ornament turned out, uh, probably even more than the larger mock-up drawing on paper, just because uh, I like how focused and concise it looks in comparison. Uh, and yeah, I will definitely be picking up more colors and nibs for these markers and incorporating them into my general mixed media artwork. So please keep an eye out for those pieces and process videos that I will be posting here in the future. Cleo. Cleo. And thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, if you're feeling particularly generous, please check out my Patreon. The link is down below here. Uh, for a nominal little fee, you get access to a bunch of behind the scenes process videos for my studio practice. Um, yeah, uh, thanks again, uh, and in the comments below, please let me know if there are any topics you'd like me to cover, subject matters you'd like to see me depict, um, products you'd like to see me test out, uh, etc. Yeah, just let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Bye.